Hey guys, what's up? Chad Wesley Smith here. I'm gonna bring you a new series. We're gonna cover uh, each uh, scientific principle of training from our book by Dr. Mike Isratel, Dr. James Hoffman, and myself, Scientific Principles of Strength Training. Uh, so we're gonna go as in-depth as I can. Uh, so this will be a seven video series, one video covering each topic, uh, talking about you know what the principle is and uh, basically how to correctly apply it to your training. So first, we're going to talk about the number one principle, the most important, specificity. And uh, specificity is really the framework which all other principles are going to work within. So it's it's kind of an umbrella that that encapsulates the rest of the principles. And as you look at, apl at applying the other principles, it all needs to be looked at through the uh, through the lens of specificity. So specificity means basically at, at its core training that is going to develop the underlying systems of the sporting task. And uh, we're gonna talk specifically about powerlifting, but understand that specificity is not unique to powerlifting, all right, or to strength sports. Um, it could be applied to any uh, training, uh, training task, so any sporting task, football, MMA, whatever, all of those, you need to look at the framework of specificity unique to that sporting task and uh, the systems that, the underlying systems that are gonna improve an athlete in that direction. So again, this is, this video is going to be directed at powerlifting with powerlifting examples, but it can be applied across the board. You just have to kind of shift the focus of, of what it's specific to. So specificity for powerlifting, we're going to look at training the muscles involved in the movement, training the nervous system in the direction of the sporting movement, and of course, training the actual sporting movements themselves, the competitive exercise. So squat, bench, deadlift, wearing whatever uh, supportive equipment you may wear for one rep is the most specific thing that you can do for the sport of powerlifting. Speci specificity exists within a spectrum, all right, from general to specific. It could be from very, very general, uh, you know, things that basically have nothing to do with powerlifting, like long distance running or, you know, running a marathon, uh, up to the very, the most specific thing, which which again is the competitive exercise, squat, bench, or deadlift in your competitive equipment for one rep max. And, you know, for the purposes of this video, we're going to be looking at, you know, a pretty small part of that spectrum. Uh, so we'll really be talking about things that are, you know, not from general to specific necessarily, but from less to more specific. Um, so spe uh, specificity for powerlifting means that we are training to enhance the size of the muscles involved in the in powerlifting, and that's going to be relatively general, all right? Um, then training to improve general strength of those muscles, which is a little bit more focused. And finally, improving the technical execution of the competitive lifts themselves. And that's going to be really the most specific thing we can do to drive our success in powerlifting. So we're gonna break specificity down into four categories, all right? That's gonna be specific training to that's gonna very well support sport performance. So this, so this would be training the competitive lifts and training them heavy and for relatively, you know, for pretty low reps. So very, very specific training. Uh, training that generally supports uh, sport performance. So training for muscular size and general strength. And we can also split those two, those, those top two categories up into subcategories. Uh, then we go into two other categories. So training that is tangential to performance. So that would be like very involved mobility training. And finally, training that is so general, it may actually harm your progress. So that could be something like endurance training, uh, where it's actually counterproductive uh, to your, to the qualities that you need for powerlifting. And excessive mobility or flexibility training could fall under that category as well. So now that we understand what specificity is, uh, the next question we want to answer is how can we correctly apply it to our training? And one of the most important uh, and the, the best understood or most discussed aspect of specificity and how it applies to our training is going to be in our exercise selection. So properly choosing exercises based on their specificity is has to also do with the time where you are during your training because more general exercises and more general loading schemes so you got to understand that specificity is not just the exercise but also the way the exercise is performed um, 
less specific variations may have a, a proper application further away um, from your competition. So again, the most specific exercise you can do is the squat, bench, or deadlift with your competitive uh, equipment on for a one rep max. So any change in that, whether it be you know a change in bar position, a uh, change in grip width, a uh, change in the pace or the timing of the lift, or uh, changes in the loading, like doing two reps of an exercise is less specific than doing one rep. Doing three reps, doing four reps, five on, and so, so on and so forth is continually less and less specific. But that less specific training, like hypertrophy training, sets of, six, sets of six to 12 reps, has its place and is very important to the grand scheme of your performance. So, you know, a lot of people will argue for specificity, say, you know, for kind of the over application of specificity, saying, well, if you only had a, a month to squat as much as you could, you know, what kind of training would you do? Of course, you would do the most specific training possible then. You would do like a Bulgarian style squatting and you know, squat to a max every single day. But in the reality of the world, we are not confined to the idea of, you know, you have to get as strong as you can this month. Uh, we have, you know, weeks and months and years and potentially decades to, to build and improve this strength. So in that, you wanna do long-term training that's gonna set you up for the most success. You know, not just this week or this month, but, you know, this year, this, quadrennial, however it gets broken up for you. So in doing that, we want to move from less specific to more specific over the course of a training cycle, over the course of an annual plan, a quadrennial, and an entire training career. It's going to kind of you know, go general, more specific, more specific, then compete, then go back to general, and so on and so forth. So uh, proper application of specificity can actually mean that when you're in a hypertrophy block, selecting an exercise like a high bar squat, uh, assuming you're a low bar competitive squatter, and doing it for sets of 8, 10, and 12 reps uh, would actually be a proper application because that's what's most specific to your goals in that phase of training. Uh, even though it, it may not be the, the competitive exercise, as long as you're doing that at the appropriate times, uh, that would be a proper application of specificity. So. I think a lot of people too who get caught up in this uh, over application of specificity wanting to do just the competitive exercises and, and do it just for very low rep schemes, they're also missing out on hypertrophy because that's best developed with higher rep ranges. They're missing out on general strength which is going to be best developed in those moderate rep ranges and they, they're going to run the risk of uh, you know overuse injuries, not fully developing uh, musculature that could be helping them with the lifts because you know, if your quads are weak, are, are the relative weak point of your squat, and you keep low bar squatting, low bar squatting, uh, you know, you're never specifically overloading your quads to give them the stimulus they need to come up to the par with the rest of your musculature. So, you know, different exercise variations are, are going to have their application there. Um, of course, you also have to consider uh, the other side of that, that as exercises become too far away from the competitive exercise, they're going to have less and less carryover. I think that's where a lot of people run into trouble with, you know, changing their exercise variation every week or getting into the use of, you know, specialty bars or, or using that stuff too close to competition. And, you know, all of those things could potentially have application. It just needs to be timed properly and the proper timing for, you know, safety squat bar, which I'm using in my training right now, is not two and three weeks out from meets. It's, you know, three and four months out, maybe for to work around an injury or, um, you know, to use in place of a front squat or as a high bar uh, squat variation and, you know, develop more quads and, you know, in my case, let me work around the shoulder injury. But besides, uh, you know, those potential pitfalls of an over application of specificity, you would also run into the issue of staleness. Staleness from both a psychological and physiological standpoint. So, you know, if you just do one rep max, one rep max, one rep max, in the same squat variation every single day, it's probably gonna kind of drive you crazy. And uh, make sure you guys check out the interview with it, we did with Max Ada, Max Ada Squatting Life, and he talks about squatting to a max basically every day for about 13 years and kind of the psychological struggles and that came along with that style of training. So not only is it gonna get boring and, and probably affect your motivation, it's also going to uh, cause the, the physio, uh, 
physio physiological staleness in which the returns on your training are, are just being diminished over time. And you know, it, it's all goes hand in hand. That's gonna happen because you're not developing hypertrophy enough and not developing general strength enough. And you know, just the longer you, you use one method, the less effective it's gonna become. But again, that, that's talking in pretty broad, uh, fairly long term, you know, that you could use the same style of training for years and years and years and make small adjustments within them, like the adjustments we're talking about here with different phases, uh, and for it to continue to be effective. But the longer one phase goes, a hypertrophy phase, let's say if you try to take a hypertrophy phase out for an entire year, the gains in the, in the last quarter of that year would be very insignificant compared to the gains in the first quarter. So again, if, as we're looking at correctly applying specificity uh, in terms of exercise selection, the closer to a meet you get, the more important it is that you're practicing the competitive lifts at very low rep ranges. Because you know, our number one goal there is gonna be developing technical prowess and honing those neural abilities for the one rep max. Um, so it's, it's all about timing. You want to do exercise variations, you want to do higher reps and stuff, that's great. That's important to training. It's just import, important that it's properly timed. You want to keep that stuff uh, you know, a little bit farther away from the competition and just properly phase your training out. The other important aspect uh, to consider when focusing on trying to apply specificity correctly to your training is what the role of assistance work is within the grand scheme of your training. So assistance work is of course important to training and long-term success, even though it is inherently a more general or less specific type of training. So uh, what you need to do is continually ask yourself, how is this helping improve my competitive lifts when you're looking at uh, selecting different assistance exercises to include in your program? And for them to be optimal, they really need to either answer the question, uh, you know, or for them to be optimal, they either need to be developing muscular size or movement strength. And uh, also understand that the variations that you select with, within uh, assistance work need to be different enough from the competitive movement to introduce novel stimulus. Uh, because if they were too close, they wouldn't, you know, overload the specific musculature that you are trying to develop, you know, whether that's for hypertrophic gains or for general strength gains. Well, there you go. That's a uh, overview of specificity for you. If you want to go more in depth to these ideas, please check out Scientific Principles of Strength Training by Dr. Mike Isratel, Dr. James Hoffman, and myself, and my own book, A Thoughtful Pursuit of Strength, both available at jtsstrength.com. Make sure you guys subscribe to the video and uh, thanks for watching.